it's actually it's perfectly fine just have your mics on yes um. right i think we're live on youtube yeah, it, says, it says it it says it right there doesn't it that's crazy because it's so few of you it's actually and there's a slight lag because you could just hear what i was saying a moment ago right guys it is <laughs> It's gone quarter past two. We are live on YouTube for our final director's panel. Um, it's been the final day of sharing plays, um, which is, you know, sad, but also wonderful because it's happened. And all of the plays that have been released from Monday to today are still available on our Strawberry Picking website. Um, I would love to introduce you to Taylor Lawson, who is an incredible director, also Brit alum, uh, remembers doing his own Strawberry Picking Festival that you might want to talk about at some point, um, who is going to host our final uh, panel. So Teo, over to you. Thanks for joining us. It's my absolute pleasure to be here and be a part of this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strawberry picking is super cool. So um, it's really nice to come back and, and, and talk to you guys about your experiences of doing it. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are all year 12. Well, it's great. Yeah, sure. Yeah, still the same. Great, great. Um, and I, I'm sure the people that are watching, the few that are joining us on YouTube, would agree that the work that you guys have created is, is absolutely extraordinary. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, and I just confirmed with Sarah um, before we, we started streaming that these were all um, intended to be live plays. Um, so I guess my first question is, and maybe we'll go around in the order um, that we have on, on my screen, which is uh, Ariana, Hannah and Salom. Um, I'd love to know, I guess, what the process was going from, this is gonna be a play, to, oh my goodness, the world is burning, we're in a pandemic, we can't be a play. Oh snap, we still have to do the story picking, what am I gonna do? I was wondering, what, what, was the, what was the sort of creative process through that timeline and, 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 and what you, um, how you got to the ideas that you eventually got to? Um, so let's, let's, let's start with Ariana and with Hannah and Um It was definitely a shock um, and I was disappointed and I think everyone was disappointed. But because of how quickly it happened and how quickly we were going into the first rehearsal, a decision had to be made very quickly, you know, of what I was going to do, a radio play, a film. Um, and we found out um, the play, I found out I was directing Dirty Talk before our two weeks off. Um, and at that point, we didn't know whether we'd be going back and whether it'd be on stage or not. So those two weeks, I'm sure everyone else would agree, I spent a lot of time sort of planning out what I would do on stage. So I had all these ideas and then we came back and then I couldn't use them. I was like, Oh what? snap. Okay. I know. <laughs> hold, I know. Hold, hold on, wait, 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 wait. So, so when were you told that it, could, that it couldn't be a stage? You were told after the two week holiday that it can't be a stage? After, yeah. It was always okay, in the waters that it probably yeah. that would happen, but I had hope, you know. Sure. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, what do I do? Because I, I like editing films anyway. And so, I'm a big vision person. I like images and stuff like mm. that. So I was like, I need to accept that this play is actually better for radio. Mm -hmm. And it, it introduced me to the, this whole new realm of directing that I'd never really considered because I was like, directing's visual. It's about what's on happening on the stage, what you can see and um, mm. physicality and stuff. But it sort of taught me this whole new thing about voice um, mm. and how important it is to direct voice, inflection, pace, pitch, tone, all of that sort mm. of thing. So although I had my initial ideas, which would definitely find their own way in, um, they wouldn't be as prominent, but as much as it was a challenge, I think that we all got our head around it pretty quickly, pretty snappy. And that's how the ideas started developing, changing, evolving. Mm. Amazing, amazing. And what about, what about you, Anna? How was the... How did he swallow the pill? Of, uh... Yeah, no, exactly like Ariana was saying. So we found out prior the two weeks. So all those two weeks, you know, I was playing for theatre, had like all my notes and everything. And then it was actually in the second rehearsal. So obviously in the half time, I was also planning what I was going to do for my rehearsals. Yeah. And then in the second rehearsal, it was like, okay, right, guys, we've just found out it's either a radio play or a film. So <laughs> it was like... <laughs> Oh God, I'm really sorry. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, I thought, okay, we have a window of opportunity here because there are things that 
you know, we can do in film that we can't do as well in theatre and vice versa. Like if I want the audience to focus on a particular shot, you know, I can manipulate where they look and stuff. So I thought, you know, with my play, it's quite, it's Brechtian style, it's quite political. I thought, right, I could really play with this and manipulate where I want my audience to focus and stuff. So I think a radio play was never in the question. You know, um, Olivia, the playwright, um, she was saying about how she wanted it to be quite physical and just reading the play itself, it's, you know, it's brimming with imagery. It's such a vibrant play that needs to be seen and then with the metaphor of the puppet. So, um, so yeah, I was like, guys, it's, it's going to be a film and yeah. It's, it's, it's offensively good. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and so long, so, so, so take me through the process for you. Yeah, mine was a lot like both of them, like, I was so ready for it to be on stage. Like I had, I spoke to Sam Zuraya about having it like with lights, like there'd be um, sounds and there'd be voiceovers. And then obviously we found out that it would be um, either a radio play or a film. And I think the main thing for me when I found out that I wouldn't be on stage was how difficult rehearsals might be because I was so um, nervous about, first of all, directing in person with everyone, with everyone who are also my peers. Mm. Um, and now I've got to adapt my rehearsal um, process and do it online. So now I can't see my car yeah. uh, physicality or maybe their mics might be a bit weird so I can't hear them as well. But I think it's, um, it's been such a good way to adapt. Like I think this whole lockdown has been a really good way to adapt for me as well as a director. And I've improved so much. So I think this has basically been a blessing in disguise and I've enjoyed it. And do, do, do you guys think that this, this, because you guys are training, it's, an, it's, actor, it's actor training essentially at Brit. Um, and, and, and you have these incredible, also give these incredible opportunities to, to direct and, and sort of think in that way. Um, has, this made, has this made you guys think that that directing is, is it, is the one, have you always thought that? Has it sort of changed or even, or the form that you're sort of like tra training in now, has it sort of made you think that you might, might want to branch out into other forms? Um, should yeah. I go? Yeah, 100% yeah. um, yeah. like, I've always had an interest in directing, but this has just confirmed it for me that it's definitely something I want to do in the future. Um, I just love the whole creative angle, you know, building a vision and bringing a text to life. I think it's it's a totally obviously it's a totally different experience to acting but in a way I kind of I thrive off it a little bit more which was a new a, a new experience to me and it was a shock to me in a way but most definitely yes mm. what about you, Anna? yeah um I completely agree like obviously the experience is completely different um my mind was always kind of set on acting and I mean I enjoyed you know I, I love writing and you know, all those other factors. But, um, you know, because we applied to be directors, you know, we, we chose because we wanted to do it. Um, and I thought, you know what, I think this would be a challenge whenever we're devising and creating theatre. I always tend to be at the forefront with like ideas and I'll just always have lots of ideas and I really like sharing them. Like, oh, what if we try this? What if we try that? So it would be interesting, you know, to actually have like that authority now. And obviously mm. still treat it as if it was a devising project because I was very adamant that all my cast, whatever idea or thought you have, like, please share it. And like, mm. you know, I don't want this to be all, oh, we're doing this, that, that, because I'm, I'm not like that. But um, then to have a bit more, you know, kind of direct them through the path and then, you know, the best feeling of when you give an actor a note and they take it on, it's like, oh my God, yes, this is beautiful. Like the best thing. So, um. It is definitely something I'd like to look into more in the future, yeah. What about you, Salon? Yeah, I've loved it, I'm not gonna lie. And it's, it's <laughs> funny because, um, <laughs> it's so weird because, um, so basically when we had to all hand in, if we wanted to be direct, um, I handed mine in and as soon as I pressed send, I was like, shit, I, I don't wanna do this anymore. Like, I don't wanna be a director, I wanna act, screw this, screw this. So like I was, um, I was getting ready to message Sarah um, can I resign from being a director? But I was like, do you know what? I'm probably not going to get it because everyone else is going to be a director. And then when we found out <laughs> that we were being directors and then my name got called, 
I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've loved it so much. Like, um, I think it's helped me a lot being an actor. Because um, when you're an actor, or when you're a director, you're, you're always still using your actor brain as well to direct because you, know you know what it takes for a character to get to a certain point. Mm. So hopefully in the future, I'll be doing more directing, um, especially since I didn't realise how much I've loved it. Um, and yeah, I've just enjoyed it so much. Um, we've got we've got a question from the lovely Sarah Goodall, uh, which is, uh, what would you do differently next time or when it gets put on stage? And let's try let's 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 go let's, let's trip the order order now this time. Let's go from sit to sit on first. Um, so if it was um I would love to put it on stage, honestly, because I still have all my stage notes like somewhere. <laughs> um, just just because I feel like it looks beautiful on stage. Um for me a main focus is light like using light and in my film I'm using two actors as the same person so I think if I'm doing it on stage I want to make it a lot more clearer um and yeah yeah it's, it's a lot of creativity with stage so yeah and what, 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 what is there anything you would do differently Hannah um same as Salom I have my notes somewhere so I'd like to bring all of those to life um I think especially you know with you know, the idea of puppetry it is the puppet show. So um, Olivia talked about in her stage directions, um, having like this massive grotesque puppet for Master, which ended up being animation in my film. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I just thought like, because one of my original ideas, if we were to do it in theatre, was to have all the actors suspended by string from the stage and having to move like that. And then it was crazy because I remember telling Olivia the idea and she was like, no way. That was my dream, but I thought it'd be impossible. And I was like, oh, how did it happen? Like, it was crazy. I was like, oh my God. And then it was a film, but I was like, anyway, I'll try and make it happen <laughs> if it does happen. So um, yeah, basically that, stay with that. That's cool. That's really, really cool. Um, what about you, Ariana? Um, oh, I would love to put it on stage. As Hannah said, and Sarah as well, you know, so many notes from ideas that we had before we found out it was going to be a radio play, whatever. Um, the main thing really is I really wanted to create this sort of on, it would be an ensemble led piece, sort of close contact, intense, um, and really show off the intimacy of the piece, because obviously it's about sex, it's going to be quite intimate. And I really would want to push that, making the audience be uncomfortable and question why they are un uncomfortable, you know? So, um, most definitely would be really physical and the lights and the music because I couldn't use the music I wanted to use for copyright so we had to I had to get my sister made some original music so I was like oh, oh um, and that was such a huge inspiration for me at the beginning was the music so all of those things definitely yeah I guess the 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 thing that I'm always trying to um one of the questions I'm always asking myself as a director when I'm directing a play or a piece of new York specifically is I guess trying to work out what the fable is or what the premise is um, and trying to communicate that and make sure that that's, that's sort of what I'm focusing on communicating. Uh, and I'm interested for the three of you in the bridge that what were, what were the, what was the sort of crux, I guess, for you or what stuck out for you most importantly about the pieces um, and what for you did you want to communicate the most about, about your pieces individually? Um, let's start with Hannah first. Um, so I think control was one of the main aspects. I mean, I'm gonna say this like several times throughout the call, but um, obviously the puppet show, you are physically being controlled. And I think this idea of power and freedom of speech, I mean, throughout the whole play, the whole play is in rhyme. And essentially the reason for that was, it was a way to repress man. And I remember one of the exercises I led my actors on was, okay, I'm gonna give you each an objective. For example, one of them was, you've been stung by a bee, you're allergic to bees and you need urgent medical care. Okay, now tell me that in rhyme. Mm. It would be really difficult. And it's such a key element that's touched on, obviously the rhyme scream, it, it's, it forms the whole thing. So um, control, power, and with the rhyme, how that oppressed someone, you know, your voice is your one tool to mm. speak out and you've even had that taken away from you. So those three things were definitely key for me to communicate. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And what about you, Evelyn? Um, for me, Tatiana, the writer, her main thing really was educating people on these on these topics. Um, so for me, within that, educating people, I my main thing was I wanted to push that these are normal conversations to be having, and that young people shouldn't feel ashamed, and a young woman shouldn't feel ashamed that she might want to have a wang or that she doesn't want to shave her vagina. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's all of those kind of things that are like pressure on young people all the time and I think my main thing really was normalizing that conversation and yes the audience might feel uncomfortable and like they're intruding but I think that would lead to the question of you know why is this tiptoed around and why is it why is it weird for this to happen and why can't someone hate sex and why can't someone love it you know so my main thing was normalizing the whole thing and and as a society we should normalize this normal that is in the play not the normal which already exists yeah completely completely what about you sam yeah um with mine like sam is an amazing writer so like when we got the script you can see you can already see the themes and what um he wanted to get out of it so with mine um it's a lot about family and i remember when we were rehearsing and i said when we put this on it's so important for how we represent um, these families because it's such a naturalistic piece that he's written in a way that these can, this is possibly someone's life. So when they're watching it or listening to it, they're thinking, wow, I can relate to the character like Dexter, uh, the moody teenager, or a character like the mom who's um, trying to juggle her life around, look after her husband, her son, and most importantly, herself. Um, so it's just about representing these characters accurately bring into life these families because there are people out there who actually live like this who mm. live with I don't want to say dysfunctional but like um a family that they just argue families are constantly arguing I just wanted yeah. to represent it in a yeah. naturalistic mm. realistic way the traumas of that also are really palpable in your in your in your in your piece do you know what I mean the, the, the trauma that those um that the people that we grow up with and feel closest to can sort of inflict upon us in a really massive way, have really big, uh, big repercussions. Um, often, oftentimes it's not, it's not strangers, it's just those people that you are told will love you the most and more than anybody else, do you know what I mean? That can hurt you the most. It's really, really quite palpable that. I think the, 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 they're all so obviously the, the forms are different and there's a question about you know the, the, the uh, we've touched on it a little bit I guess about the the impacts that the form took on you guys but I'm interested in you know from switching uh, forms from going to stage and to radio plays onto film what what inspired you who inspired you what artists inspired you what there was was there sort of like a um, was there a, 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 a playlist that you put together or was there a particular film that you liked or a particular radio bit that you liked or a particular artist that, that, that you loved? Um, let's go from, uh, let's, go, let's go to Ariana first. Um, so my main inspiration were two songs. So one song being Mass Seduction by St. Vincent and the other song being I'm Too Sexy by Right Said Fred. <laughs> Completely different songs, right? Because you've got Mass Seduction, which is, um, sort of deep layered, connected, intimate, um, exposing, vulnerable sort of viewpoint on sex and intimacy and relationships. And then you've got I'm Too Sexy, which is more lustful, fun, jokey about your appearance, you know, and it those completely different perspectives. I mean, mass seduction was really the main thing which inspired me and it inspired what I was going to do on the stage. But with the radio play, I did find myself going more towards the I'm too sexy route because as a as a radio play experience, it just seemed to work better. But for me, it was about finding a middle ground between those two songs. So that's what sex should be. And that's what relationships should be. You know, um, they can be laid, connected, deep, whatever. And some people might not want that. Some people might just want some fun. And I, what I like about the two songs is they both own what they're saying, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think it's really important that any viewpoint on your sex life and, you know, your relationships or how intimate you want to be should be respected. And um, so finding a middle ground between those two. And there was also this um, YouTube channel called Come Curious, which 
Tatiana introduced me to because that was a huge influence for her when she was writing the play. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wanted to have a look at it. And these two women just speak so openly, so casually. And I think those conversations and the tone of those conversations was really important to find within the piece. So I'd say those three things were my main inspiration. Great, yeah. St Vincent is a favourite of mine. Oh, um, she's just a legend. Um, what about you, Sal? Um, yeah, for me, um, like, I don't know, for some reason I got, I don't know, I got into classical music, which is really weird because I don't look like the fact that it's classical music. It's dope. Um, so, yeah, um, but um, as I was listening to it, like, you can hear the classical music that I put in yeah. my um, piece. Um, I just got really into, like, trying to use really, setting the mood with, like, music was a big inspiration for me. So, yeah, music and just how it sounds. Because mm. mm. I guess what the music in your piece does really effectively is, is, is turn a family dynamic or that, that's that you know these arguments in a family dynamic which could be seen to be quite micro and blows it up into into like a sphere that is actually quite epic and quite cinematic um yeah. and so it, it it helps to to um to raise and sustain the stakes of these sorts of interactions between these these everyday people um in a really effective way it's just really cool um what about you hannah so um there one, I don't actually have any music in my piece apart from the last song that comes up in the credits, um, which is At Last by Etta James, which this girl called Alice Page from Music covered really beautifully. And um, I came across that, I was actually trying to find a song for a friend to help them with their project. And then YouTube just started auto playing all the other songs. And then this song came up at last. And obviously I don't want to spoil anything if you haven't um, finished the film yet, but um, I thought it was just so sad with how you know the film ends and then you have at last come along it's like my happy days mm. the you know the contrast and I thought that's really depressing so um I used that I was inspired by that song and then as well Olivia actually wrote in the script I had to get it out because I completely forgot um the song Black Woman which was a work song so I remember I listened to that to see obviously because she said that was where her inspiration came from mm. And that was in scene four when um, all the workers are talking about, you know, here in heaven, you know, we work for our freedom. And um, it's a really sad song. There's a lot of history behind it. And I remember playing it for my cast members saying like, you know, Olivia was inspired by this. We should listen to it and the meaning behind it because it's really beautiful, passionate song. So um, definitely I, that song, obviously I was inspired by because Olivia was inspired by. Um, yeah. But apart from that, um, that was it, really. Yeah, because there are elements in yours that are, I mean, at the most, that, that I, I remember wetting myself and almost throwing my laptop in fury at how good it was. Um, that the, those the moments of of um, of Vefram Dunn, like the, the making the familiar strange that you do with the the plastic food, and you mentioned Brecht before as well. Um, I'm like, I was so angry that he did it so well. Like, this is amazing. It's so so cool because um, it really work. It really works to sort of connect this. This not only the, the whatever's happening in the world at the moment with the chlorified chicken, but also the idea of, of this mass-produced material plastic and the mass-produced food and the, and the capitalism that that sort of connects the two. Um, is a really powerful statement that you made there, um, and it's also like really Wes Anderson-y. Do you know what I mean like like going from like a, a a a toy house and then jumping into the house is really, um, really clear, really clear images and really clear sort of lines into it. You know, um, it, it, did did you did, are you guys studying Brecht? Are you guys fans of fans of Brecht in general, or or was it just a, a sort of like a, a happenstance? Well, we actually so we did political term in term two, and um, so obviously Brecht was one of the main practitioners we studied, and. Um, I mean, this play is a Brechtian play, so I kind of used my knowledge from that term mm. and implemented what I had learned, whether it was, you know, obviously there were things already embedded in the play. So whether that was the narration, um, yeah. you know, at the end, um, when they wipe the feet um, on a human being, I thought I have to keep that in. Um, <laughs> But also like stuff I implemented, such as the placards, um, you know, I switched the genders of all the characters to make a statement because they were really stereotypically talking about women and men. So um, 
just little bits like that. But I, I loved the Brechtian nature of it because there was so much you could play around. And then uh, one of my friends from film helped me do the editing. And um, things like when the words come up on the screen, like, oh, I'm your friend, enemy. Oh, you can't. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. You no, know, just you could have so much fun with it. And that was one of my favorite things about it. So, um, yeah. It's, it's, those, it's those sorts of things, really clear ideas that come from and are platformed really beautiful in all three of your projects um, that are facilitated by the shift of form. Do you know what I mean? Um, which is just amazing because of, of course, you know, I, 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 can, I can imagine a sort of epically luscious soundscape for Sal's play. And of course I can imagine a, re a really beautiful a specific tone being achieved and the sensuality in, in, in Dirty Talk. And of course, I can sort of imagine the ways in which that placards or like, you know, very clear sort of juxtaposing uh, characters and figures in, in, in Hannah's piece will be there. But it, it, was, it was achieved so excellently in all three of yours because of the form that, 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 that you guys are working in. Um, was, there, was there, I guess, a, a moment, did you, how do you say it? Did, did you ever stop mourning the fact that it wasn't a play? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> How can you, you know, but no and yes. No in that I'd always be like, this is going to be so good on stage. <laughs> um, whatever, wherever it, whenever that happens, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, come on, get over it. Look at the project at hand and get on with that. So it was a lot distracting and there would be moments where I'd be like, oh, this moment on stage, what I would do, whoa. But you yeah. know, you have to let go and you have to move on, but it's not over. Exactly. And that's a good lesson for directing because it doesn't always all go your way. And sometimes you have to just deal with what you have in your hand and try to make it the best you can. Um, so we've got some questions for... Um, the crew, the wider world, got quite a few. This is really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're gonna go work through these. All right. Um, nom 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 nom. Were there any moments in the script that really stuck out for you guys? Let's start with Sal. Yeah. Um, so um, obviously, I have two people playing the same character in mind. Um, so moments in the script. Oh, um, so at the end, there's a really big uh, monologue. Um, done by Zach, who's an amazing actor. Um, and he's the, like, I don't want to give too much away, but he's the father. And the way it's written in such a way where you can see, like, you can feel his pain and you can feel, like, what he's going through and everything he's been through since he's come back from being in the ICU. Like, his whole world's been flipped upside down yeah. um, from his relationship to his, with his son. Uh, to his relationship with his wife like and that monologue was so powerful for me I remember highlighting oh I like this I like this taking everything off and for me I just wanted to find a way that I can deliver that in a really creative powerful way yeah so I enjoyed completely. That. completely what about you Anna? I mean there were so many moments I mean I remember reading it for the first time and I'm like she's written this all in rhyme I was just like oh, wow this this is incredible and you know the fact that it had a meaning behind it as well it wasn't just some you know tat um <laughs> some rhyming tat do, you know um so I think like Sel was saying one of the biggest moments that stuck out to me was definitely the ending monologue um which Renee performs and she does it so beautifully um I think that'll always stay with me. I just, it basically summed up the entire meaning of the play and the, everything they were talking about. And it was written so eloquently and performed so well. So, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Um, and you, Ariana? Um, two scenes which stuck out to me from the beginning were the ones covering the more sensitive topics. So there's a scene about a rape experience and a scene about a grooming experience. And for me, it was really important that we did those scenes justice. And the two actresses who did that, Layla, who did the rape scene and Annabelle, who performed the grooming scene, the process of um, rehearsing that was so important, I think, within our process. And it sticks out to me because they both allowed themselves to be so vulnerable. They both allowed themselves to really find their way in these characters. And I really think they did the two parts justice. So those things, they will definitely stick out to me. Um, I also really love the phone call scene. Um, I just think that's brilliant. The tension in the room in the second one, especially. I yes. love that. 
but so many good moments yeah it's amazing um, another question is um what yes okay 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 cool so sort of leading from cells some cells observations i guess of, about uh, applying to be a director um for the three of you what made you apply to be a director rather than actor in the first place um let's go back in order so start with ariana and go back to some um i always wanted to apply for director like i knew when i applied for brit i would be applying to be a director um because it's it's the one main opportunity to direct at brit um and the idea of taking someone's work and bringing it to life and finding a vision is something I've always wanted to do. Um, watching other directors work like Ian Ricks and Emma Rice, people like that really inspired me. And I was like, oh, I wanna have a go. I wanna see how I am because I'm quite visual. I like putting things together um, and just be on the outside for once yeah. um, and seeing how that is and it definitely paid off. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I was lucky I had a very lovely cast. They were also brilliant like you know it's good when you're looking forward to going to rehearsals and seeing everyone so you <laughs> yeah, know good. they made the experience better for me I'm sure but you know I enjoyed it so much and I'm so glad I did um yeah. direct what about you Anna yeah no definitely um I think I applied to be a director because I wanted to challenge myself and as well just the opportunity like you know predominantly what we have been studying at Brit for these past few terms is acting so I thought you've been given the opportunity to direct, you know, why not take that and try it out? And I'm so glad I did because I learned ridiculous amounts, like, and it's definitely opened my view and what Sel was saying earlier about having, you know, an actor's mind was super helpful. Um, I definitely will take my directing mind into acting and vice versa. So um, yeah, really happy I did. Amazing. What about, what about you, Sel? Yeah, I actually don't know. Like, I saw the role. <laughs> I saw the role there. It was just chilling. Um, I've always been one to just take opportunities anyway. So if I see something, I'm going to say yes to it. Like, um, especially if it's possibly going to help further my career um, as a performer. So I saw it there. I literally had no idea. I just found myself typing a CV, an application, sent it to Sarah and said, whatever happens, happens. And I'm glad I did. Like, it's, I, I just love taking opportunities, and this was one that was definitely worth it. And I'm definitely going to be doing it again. Yeah. Sometime. Yeah. I think one of one of the most one of the most. Well, I don't know if I regret stopping acting, but I definitely remember having conversations with um with people when I left Britain was at university, um, and we still sort of try and make a choice about whether you know which one um and make and people making it very obvious that they perceived that there was a need to pick one thing um and i think it's probably actually what a great uh, uh, i regret it for a little bit picking one thing because that's not the case i mean 100 percent is not the case uh, and, and you know you have fantastic people who both act and direct or who write and direct or who write and act um and so if, if if you guys enjoyed it please don't ever let anyone tell you that it's you, you have to you have to pick one you can definitely um mold your career to be whatever you want it to be um which character in your play do you relate to the most uh, let's start with hannah oh god um oh that's so difficult um not sir not master uh oh god literally oh my god <laughs> that's such a tricky question um i if i had to pick i'd pick man because i'm not like president or anything you know it's just like you know, yeah man we'll say man <laughs> that was a really high stakes answer i really like that very good uh what about you sir <laughs> um <oof. laughs> um i think it would uh, this is so weird. I think it would be Maud. So um, she's like this nosy neighbor character. She's just <laughs> full of. It. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but um, she's kind of like this. Yeah, but um, <laughs> um, she's just this character with just energy, uh, short attention span. So that explains a lot. Um, but yeah, I think I kind of, I kind of see myself like, like she, she can't, she can't. I don't want to spoil too much, but she, but she comes over. Um, trying to comfort the main character Eve um, and fails because she's just got so much to talk about and I see that in myself like my empathy skills are really bad like I just, I'm not good at comfort I'm not good at comforting Eve but uh, 
But um, yeah, I, I really, <laughs> I really like. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that live, but um, I really like her character. It's um, done. It's out really there. Like this, this, this is the joys of the, of the internet. Do you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I, I slightly hope that it will be recorded, just so that in ten years you can look back on it and uh, yeah. and and you cut this. <laughs> oh man. Um what about what about you, Ariana? Um um sorry, sales just made me laugh intensely. Um <laughs> uh the god, there's like 30 characters, isn't there? I probably would have to say the... Also, let me let me say if it is if if it if it if it causes us to go too far into anything that's too personal, I'm sure it's it's more than okay to not actually answer that question. Um but go for it. No, I don't mind. I mean, that's the point of the play, isn't it? I'm not, you know. Um, I'd probably have to say there's a line in the wanking scene, which I find so funny. And I would love to play that line. It's a line Tara does. And it goes, um, do girls wank? And then she goes, do cows breathe? I love that. <laughs> so it would probably be that one, yeah. I think my, my favourite line from yours was, uh, strong. Oh my god! I was yeah. like, <laughs> well proud. I felt well proud. <laughs> I was dead. Yeah. I was dead on the floor. <laughs> dead. Um, so good. So many great lines. Um, uh, okay, Mr. Warden, hey Stuart. Um, I've been lucky to. Oh, okay. Um, I'm lucky to have uh, seen Sal rehearse. He has been so focused and the other pieces have been liberating to watch and hear. I wonder what they have learned about themselves during this process. Um, Stuart Warden, he's going deep, he's going in. Uh, let's start with Hannah. What I have learned, um, I've learned so much. Um, I've learned that, you, well, to be a director, you need to be super, super, super organized. Like I, I I've always said that I can't multitask. Um, this this proved otherwise, like that really pushed my ability. Um, as well, something really important that I learn, um, if you can't bring a bad energy in, like you are guiding everyone. So if you're stressed, if you're tired, get over it. Cause you are leading a cast of seven people and however you are gonna be is gonna affect them. So I feel like that's that's a good mantra for life like you know just carry that with you every day you know you just gotta gotta keep going so um yeah definitely that was like the main thing I took away mm -hmm. it is a it's a it's an incredibly um tough thing to compartmentalize not only the job at hand but also your own person your, your you know your ego and your insecurities and your anxieties specifically as a director because they do they do bleed out into the room you know um and they, 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 they can have really detrimental effects um it's, uh, yeah, that's a really quick observation. Um, what about you, Sal? <clears throat> um, being prepared, I was being prepared to be surprised mm -hmm. um, with me. Like, my cast surprised me every single rehearsal. I had, like, specific things that I wanted to do in that rehearsal, and I kind of had an idea of what the outcome would be. So if I'm, and I would always think outside of the box of, like, my rehearsal plans. But my car, like I'd make some hard rehearsals, like I'd make them go through some serious stuff. And the outcome would always be different and better than what I imagined. And I loved that about working with people. So I think I've been found that I'm, I love being collaborative. And I, as much as I love being a director and painting this vision of what I see, um, as, and as much as it's my uh, film or radio play and as much as it's Sam, it's also the cast as well, and making them a part of that is just really important to me. Yeah. Totally. Um, what, about, what, about, what about you, Ariana? Um, I think definitely trust the process, um, trust the actors, trust the writer, um, in that, you know, something will come of it, and you just got to have faith and keep grinding um, and plan, always plan. And it's one thing I would say to myself would be like, focus on the detail more because having listened to it I'm very happy with what we've created and I think it's great and I'm very proud of it but of course that me being me there's always things I would improve you know so you know focusing on detail is definitely something I've learned about inflection something I've learned to focus more on um and yeah just directing voice and um, directing music I've never done that before because my sister made the music mm. and she's a musician I was lucky 
Um, so directing music and where I want this sound effect and stuff. Lots of new skills and so much to improve on, so much to learn. Yeah. Amazing. Um, another question. Um, if you could do the whole process again, which other play would you choose to direct? Uh, let's start. Let's do <laughs> Man, go on, Sam. Go on. What other play would I direct? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a question. Um, no, it's not, what? It's, it's, I it's, love, it's not mine. It's a good one. Um, I love tenebrosity. Like, I have to say, I love... I don't even know if that's how you say it. Um, tenebrosity and definitely... Sorry, Hannah, the puppet show. I'm taking those as well. Um, <laughs> because um, both of them, the way, like, I'm a really experimental person, like, really thinking outside the box. And I think, like, having those ideas in my head, I think I'd be able to do something with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Ariana? Um, I think I would choose W by Rue. Um, I loved her idea. You know, she had, she picked, she had this um, art piece of art by Tracy Emmons, the, the bed, right? And she made all the characters, the objects around it. I thought it was such a brilliant idea and I loved the writing and that. So yeah, that would be really cool to direct. Cool, what about you, Hannah? Yeah, same as Ariana. I love W. I thought it was so funny. I would have loved to direct that. Also, A Lullaby to My Heart, which Lily wrote because I just, I thought it was a beautiful script. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and well, I guess you, I guess you sort of covered it, but I'd like, I'd, what, I, what, I'd, what I'd like, what I'd like is maybe like a really clear yes or no. And then we can, and then, and then we can, then we can maybe dig into it a little bit. Um, but has this experience inspired you to direct more shows in the future? So. Yeah. Hannah? Yeah. And Hannah? Yes. Oh, good. Yay. <laughs> Happy days. Happy days. Um, what would you do? Dif what would you? It's a weird question. I guess like what, what, why? Ariana, go on. Um, I just enjoyed it so much. There's so much I've learned. I'm like, I want to use that. And I want to do it again, but I want to do it on the stage. That's the thing now. All of the things I've taken from this, I want to do it on the stage so badly. And, why? And, and why the why 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 the stage? What is it? What is it about directing for stage that that you feel so specifically interested? In? Because yeah, I feel like the atmosphere created in a theatre is like none other. The conversation sparks from being in the theatre is like none other. And you know what I've noticed from watching, like I watched The Lungs by Duncan McMillan. Um, on the screen a couple of weeks ago I was like wow imagine being in the room like I didn't get to see that one on stage so I think there's an energy and there's a sense within live theatre and you've got the audience right there they can't move they can't escape they can't say anything and I think it's real it's a, it's a platform to say something important it's a platform to make people feel feel think speak about things and I don't think that actually happens anywhere else other than I would say maybe a concert so you know definitely that intrigues me and I would love to pull people into a room this is, that sounds really weird <laughs> in the room um and say something and then take something from it when they leave That's... yeah yeah completely what about you, Hannah? Yeah, definitely agree what, with what Ariana said. Um, I think as well, you know, when you act, well, personally, when I act, I do miss that side of, oh, I wish I could create something. And like, unless it's a device piece, but if you have someone directing you, it's like, oh, I have an idea. Oh, I can't really say it. Like, you, you know, <laughs> I, I do miss that. Like, I, I love being able to create something and just getting so excited with ideas and, you know, it was the most wonderful thing when everyone started to bounce off each other and then there's this energy that's created. So um, I think it's just as rewarding to, you know, present to everyone a character and tell their story, but also be the person who dictates how that story is shown. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what about you, Sal? Yeah, definitely. Just because, um, like... I always have a, like, I can always see things really well. Like, if it's in my head, I can see it. And being able to 
read something that was just on a blank piece of paper um, and then spend like a few weeks on it and bring it to life is and make it look like how it looked in my head is crazy and I've enjoyed and like I have to do it again like I've got after doing this uh, my whole summer I've tried to make sure that I'm gonna keep going like it's giving me a lot of momentum and yeah. it's made me deep like I've, I've for some script it's there's a, it's a radio play it's a film and hopefully it can be a stage production if if you want a music video like there's so many different ways to create art and like yeah, I think yeah. this experience has made me want to do it in as many ways as I possibly can yeah completely completely um and any advice is any, there any is there any advice you'd give your past self about directing um Ariana focus on the detail look into the tiny things in the play because they make all the difference amazing yeah. what about you Hannah yeah trust in the process and just be super organized like if you think like this is organized like beyond yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah relax i think um don't try not to overthink everything um and trust in the people i'm working with like, i was put with them for a reason so just trust in my team yeah, yeah completely completely i guess that the, the sort of like interesting thing i guess it's what really means into a little, a little bit about what i was, what I was sort of said, talking about this morning is that there isn't a right way of doing it do you know what I mean it is such a personal journey to find your process and to refine your process and to work out how you can um, make your process as effective as it possibly can be um and even just hearing just how differently you know all your the, the, the advice that you guys would give to your past selves which is absolutely fascinating um because ultimately you know you're all individual like completely separate artists and even though they do the same job you approach it in such different ways it's, it's really fascinating um Okay, and I think the last question we have on this list is, um, what is the biggest development you made with your cast throughout the process? Uh, what about you? What, what, let's, let's start with Hannah. Biggest development? Um, I mean, there were so many, whether that was, I mean, the main one, obviously, you start from nothing and then you get a fully formed film at the end. Like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> 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 But like in terms of details, um, I'd say just oh, when you gave an actor a note and they took it on and they just completely transformed that. I, I think like in terms of those developments were just the most like outstanding ones. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely that. Yeah. Uh, what about yourself? Um, yeah, that was loads. I think for me, there was this one time in rehearsal um, I created this game called Show Me, Tell Me, because um, we were studying a practitioner called Bawal, who's like a lot about tell me, um, show me like what you want your character to do and stuff like that. Mm. But the game was just to kind of, um, I'd ask actors, why is your character doing this? And then they'd answer, he's doing this because, da -da 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 -da. Um, and he's using these tactics. So I'd tell them, so show me that. And I'd give them a line to show me. And, when we were doing that game, it brought out so many different outcomes of how we can um, deliver lines that we hadn't explored before. So that was a big breakthrough and I enjoyed it. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, and what about you, Ariana? Um, mine would definitely have to be commitment because I can understand. I mean, if someone handed me that script and told me I was going to do all these quite exposing things, I would feel really scared of it and I think at the beginning you know I look back to day one and then the end when I asked them all to make a, an orgasm sound full out you know that's mad like I can I don't think I could do that and you know that's the biggest progression really their commitment to what this play is about and owning that it's going to be uncomfortable at points and owning that we're trying to make it as real even though it is intimate and it is uncomfortable um so yeah and I think by the end I mean if you listen to it you will know they went for it and I think that's really important and I'm really sort of it sounds weird but I'm proud of them for reaching that point yeah did, did you did you were there any was there anything happened that made that that were you surprised yourself 
um i would definitely say with how <laughs> i was more assertive than i thought i would be <laughs> you, know, you know that moment when you see oh my god they're about to do it they're gonna do it it's that moment of oh my gosh i'm gonna keep pushing you i'm gonna keep going on you until you do it because i can see it's coming do you know what i mean so i think in those moments i sort of lost myself in saying you've got this you're gonna do it you're gonna do it and then they did it was like whoa like yeah I don't know what I was expecting because I was in Tatiana's workshop group for her writing process. So I knew mm. about the play. Really weird, actually. We'd been on FaceTime two months before we found out saying, wouldn't it be weird if I directed your play? And then it happened. It was really weird. <laughs> um, yeah. So I knew what was coming and I was, I was surprised at, you know, how much they went for it and how much, you know, they took ownership of what the play was and mm. was great as well. Yeah, I was really happy. And what about you, Hannah? Did anything surprise you? Did you surprise yourself? Um, I think just like how they went for certain characters, like um, for example, like um, obviously there are people who you knew more in the cast and people who you didn't know as well. So um, for example, um, I'll say like one of my actors, Pasha, uh, she was playing the son and I remember I you know I told her like this is the shot and you have to you know play playing the video game blah 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 and I remember she sent me the video and she had just done all this amazing character work like she put the sound of the video game in the background she was like <laughs> getting all really into it and it was literally because I, I remember like one of the first tasks I set them on was like doing the Stanislavski thing of you know, what was it something in solitude where you literally just do whatever you would be doing for like a solid like 10 to 15 minutes yeah and I literally received like just a five minute video and I was just loving going through all the footage like wow this is great like I love <laughs> this um so just moments like that when they would really like delve into their character and find little details and just really getting absorbed by it and yeah I was just just little surprises like that it was it was really lovely yeah. oh what about you Sam? Yeah, it's basically the same. Like, I did not think anyone was going to listen to me at all because, <laughs> like, um, I wouldn't say I'm on, like, I can be, I can have a lot of sense of humour at times, but I didn't think when I'm being serious, they'd actually listen to me or um, take the direction. Um, and we had these, like, Thursday lessons, which were early in the morning, so my class was tired, and I think, oh, they're not going to listen to me, they're going to be tired, but I was surprised at how much they gave to the piece. Like they were committed. They weren't just coming because they had to. Like they were enjoying what they were doing. So I yeah. just love that about it. What what's what was the early class on a Thursday? Um, it's so basically we just had our rehearsals every Thursday, but nice. instead of it being like from two fifteen before, it would be like. I don't, was it nine or ten? It sounds really bad, but that's early for us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so what, what time is it? Me. Nine, nine o'clock? Ten. Ten? <laughs> oh, ten. That's early for me. Ah! That's early for me as well, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I forgot 10 a.m. existed before mm -hmm. we had those rehearsals. So, oh, my um, days. But we got into it. We got into it. That is... Uh... <laughs> That's so fun. I miss I I I miss the, the the Brit school years so so hard. There was there was so much fun. Um, and what is the like? Is there anything that you've that you've learned as uh, I've never asked this question already, but is it, I'm going to re repeat myself if if I need to. Is there anything that you've learned as a director that you feel like anything specifically that you've learned as a director that you feel will help you now in in your sort of continued. Um, uh, acting training in Brit as an actor specifically. Go on, Hannah. I think taking risks and if something doesn't work out, knowing that there's another way and there's another way you can go about it. Um, that's quite a tricky question. Um, yeah, plus like all the other things I was saying earlier, like for example, about the energy, like the energy you bring into a rehearsal room, that's that's crucial yeah. or, you know, just being on top of your game and yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
What about you, Sal? Um, stuff that'll tell me as an actor. Um, keep asking myself questions. Um, the way I just direct, I'd ask questions like, "Why are you doing it like this?" Um, so I think for myself, keep asking myself those questions, like, "Why? Why? Just why?" I think just why am I doing this as an actor? Why am I delivering lines like this, like that? Why am I moving like this in a specific scene? I think yeah, asking questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now about you, Rihanna? Um, I think definitely as an actor, to when it when it you when your director says to you go for it, they mean go for it full ham, <laughs> you know. And I think I've learned that it's easier to tone something down if it's too much than it is to build something up if that makes sense. So I'd rather someone gave me too much and then we say, let's take this away, than them give me too little and have to keep building on that. Cause that kind of takes longer and it's, you don't find it as quickly. So I would definitely say when a director says to me in future, go for it, I will go for it, you know? So definitely that. Big time, big time, big time. It's really, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of, a sort of truism, isn't it? That you sort of, it's easy to sort of, toned down than tone up you look at these those sort of like incredible particularly cinematic actors like Jack Nicholson or Robin Williams whatever you know these sort of people that can churn out the Joker or the lead mobster in The Departed or, or I don't know the Aladdin Genie or the professor in Good Will Hunting it's like how like how do you know what I mean and they're able to sort of take it to, to, to a real maximum um, and bring it back when they need to but also they don't it sort of concentrates the detail. Do you know what I mean you don't you don't scale it back? But then I have nothing that is scaled back. Like there's actually full of detail in that. Um, really incredible performers, both of them. Um, I am conscious that we are running out of time, and this is our hour. Um, so I guess one last question that I'll ask. Um, I guess it's sort of like specific, specifically, I guess for all of you guys, but. If there was sort of one word that you could use to describe the process, because I also have want to talk a bit about process in the sense of like, because you all you did this all in lock during lockdown, right? Is that is that true? Yeah. I mean, like, that's like insane. Like, what was the what what was the what was the, I guess the biggest obstacle um, trying to, to to make these pieces during uh, a lockdown like this? Um, hit me, sir. Um, a lot of it is just. I think as I was talking about, like when you're rehearsing in lockdown or when you've got two characters who have such an intimate scene together and the only way you can rehearse or shoot it is through a camera. Yeah. So like, you feel like you've not got that same connection when you're face to face with them. Um, but we got through it. Like we were so comfortable with each other that we, it just, it just happened. It was an obstacle, but we just, we just got over with it. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Anna? Yeah, kind of what Sal was saying, like, um, like my first thing I ever did with my cast was an icebreaker session, because I was saying like, if we're gonna be working with each other for the next five weeks. It's crucial that we're close yeah. and we can trust one another and we can say, well, actually, you know, you know what I mean? So um, I remember we came into school, or, like all of us one day, and it, we were all so shy and it was so weird because we were like all so friendly to each other, you know, behind a camera. And then we were all together, we were all just so shy. But then I remember the next week we came into school, we, we all did master's voice together. And that was so funny and it was so fun. It was so good. Um, so obviously that was really difficult. And obviously everyone had so much other work on because originally we would have never had voice or physical. And we also had like community theatre. So it was like, I, oh. you know, we couldn't focus all our time on this strawberry picking piece. Yeah. And, you know, you had to storyboard as you go, you had to film, edit. So it was all like, there's so much on. But, you know, if anything, those challenges just showed, like, you can do it. And we learned more from it. So it was totally worth it in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you, Ariana? Um, <laughs> the last two rehearsals, um, when they were in their sound booths, I say homemade sound boots are two chairs with a duvet over them. Yeah. And they were sitting yeah. in there and it was like the hottest day it's been. And it was 
literally madness it was so I have to laugh about it because it was funny but that was definitely an obstacle because we were right there we were right at the end and you know they were hot I'd got them to do the scene another time I was like come on guys one more time so that final obstacle was such a big deal and I think we overcame it really nicely and it was a, such a fun experience but the other thing on me really was I wanted it to be right for the writer like I wanted Tatiana to like what I'd done with it yeah. and you know I hope I've done that I think I've done that um, and I think she's happy with it and more more so than anything now from what we've created I'm excited to see where she takes it next really and what she decides to do with it so I have to I'm really excited to see what's next for Dirty Talk really yeah yeah completely um this has been super super dope uh, to meet all of you uh, all your works were just so inspirational um and it's really nice and brilliant to see that the folks there at brit are smashing it smashing it so much so i'm filled with this en this envy this utter jealousy this is absolutely ridiculous this is so good this is so so good um how many, so is, is, is this, how many of you guys started in year 12 and how many of you guys came in year 10? Are you guys all sort of year 12 starters? I started in year 12. But in year 12, yeah, but so. yeah. year 12. They're all like external, I think, yeah. I think, yeah, Incredible. yeah. Incredible. Well, enjoy the rest of this year and enjoy um, year 13 because it's, it, I promise you, these are going to be the best two years of your life, 100%. 100%. Yay, thank you so so thank much you. for hosting our um our final panel of strawberry picking it's been a total pleasure absolutely hilarious I've, <laughs> I've been absolutely hooting with laughter Good. With the on. um no brilliant thank you so so much um absolute pleasure honestly really really fabulous um some real interesting exciting very funny insightful comments from all of our directors this afternoon um i've just got one thing to remind people if they're listening tomorrow we're doing uh, some rehearsed readings of your rapid write so if you have watched or listened to a play during the season and you want to write a response as a play um hand it in by 4 15 today the link is on our strawberry picking website uh, they will be selected and rehearsed tomorrow and shared at 2.15 on here again. Um, congratulations to all of Year 12. It's been an absolutely brilliant season so far and we look forward to tomorrow and celebrating the snow globes on Friday. Um, and panelists, if you say you are, I'm gonna stop streaming and chat to you in just a moment. Thanks everybody. Well done guys.